One of the interesting things about the runes is the order in which the alphabet comes has changed over the past 2,000 years. The, the particular glyphs or letters have moved around. Sometimes the alphabet read from right to left, sometimes from left to right. So when I got my bag of stones, I had a couple of sheets of paper which gave me a sort of two-line description of each rune, but I, the, the sheets weren't numbered. I didn't know what order they came in. So if I decided I'd let the runes make their own order, which is a kind of strange thing to do, and I don't tell that too often. So I put them all face down on my desk in the library late one night. I turned them all face down, moved them around, swirled them around, and then began to pick them. And then I put them into five rows of five stones each because they're 25 stones altogether. And then I turned them over. And when I turned them over and looked at them, what was interesting was that the rune that stood for the self, humanity, man and woman, had placed itself up in the upper right-hand corner. And this is what it looks like. And so that became the first rune. And I sat there holding it and thinking about it. And the idea came to me that the starting place is always the self, and that its essence is water, and that only clarity and willingness to change are useful now. For from a right relationship to the self comes a correct relationship to all others and to the divine. And what was interesting about the way these rows had stretched out, the self was in the first place, and I looked down in the last place, which is the far left corner, and there was the blank rune, the rune of the divine. And so the oracle had arranged itself like a map leading the self back to the divine, which I thought was pretty cool. And a couple of weeks later, I was working with these stones, and I somehow managed to cut my finger, and I was about to put bandage on it, and I remembered that in ancient times, the Vikings used to sometimes dip the runes in their own blood to make a testament that they were committed to this way of life. So I quickly squeezed my finger and collected all the blood, and you can see it on the 25th rune. The, I got Blum's blood on all the runes, and that's been there for 30 years doesn't seem to wash away. So after the self, the second rune in the position of was the rune of partnership, and uh, which was made good sense because if you start with the self, partnership probably comes next. The third rune, which looks like an F, was actually the rune of signals. And following that came the rune of separation, which looks like this. And the last one on the top row was the rune of strength, which looks like this. So that was the first five runes. And the first rune in the second row was the rune of initiation, which is interesting because you've got the self, you've got partnership, you've got strength, and then you've got initiation. And after initiation comes the rune of constraint, difficulties that come at that point in life, and following constraint came fertility, which is about new beginnings, and then came, interestingly enough, the rune of defense, followed by the rune of protection. And it was interesting that the, the runes make a distinction between defense and protection. That completes the second row. The third row begins with possessions. And following possessions comes joy. And after joy comes the rune of harvest, which makes sense. So your possessions give you joy, and the harvest comes from that. And out of the harvest comes light, opening. And then... The very center of the of the alphabet, the fifteenth rune, when you have five rows with five each, 
The 15th row is actually the center point, and it's the rune of the warrior, the spiritual warrior, which is what this whole business is about. The fourth row begins with growth, the rune of growth, and following that comes movement, and following movement comes flow, which means, it's, if you're thinking of it, it's saying, you know, you get the flow going from movement, and after that comes disruption, because when things are flowing, you usually get disruption, and the end of the fourth row is the rune of, of journey, uh, of both journey in life and spiritual journey. And uh, the fifth row begins with a gateway, which is a place that you pass through, but not without thinking about it, because following that comes the rune of transformation, and after transformation comes standstill, and after standstill comes wholeness and healing, and finally the last rune, which is the blank rune. And I suppose what you could do, or what I could do, was really string the whole alphabet together. So it would say this. Let's see if we can do it. So the starting point is the self. And from there you find partnership. And in partnership you find signals and communication. And you learn what must be separated and what must be kept so that you can live in strength. Then you're ready to be initiated, and when initiation comes, there's constraint and pain, and out of that comes a new form of fertility and defense and protection of what you've gained, and then comes possessions and wealth and joy, and out of the joy comes harvest, and out of the harvest, presumably you learn where the real light is coming from in your life, and you proceed as a spiritual warrior toward that light, and then comes growth. And out of growth comes movement and the flow that, even though it's disruption involved in flow, you are on the journey. And the journey takes you to the gateway beyond which lies transformation. And standing still, you meet the wholeness and healing you require to become complete and return to the divine. And from the divine, you start over. The self comes from there and you begin again. So if one were to say that's the way the alphabet is construed, and you can see how it's different from the alphabets we use, and it's kind of amazing that each of these alphabets stands for things. The root of harvest, for instance, stood for a year, or the fruitful part of the year. And uh, the root of defense stood for the yew tree, because the yew was the wood from which bows were made, and it had to do with avertive power. And so each of these runes has a whole set of, of meanings attached to it, which separated from the kind of alphabet we're used to, which is rather pallid in, comp in comparison. So that's, that's the runes oracle. It's been a great pleasure in my life. And I'm delighted to see Margaret Mead once said that and she's an anthropologist and a great fan of the runes and a supporter. And she said, any oracle that's worth its salt has to be good for at least three generations. Well, since I midwifed this oracle, this is now the, this Hogwarts generation is the third generation. And they will carry the runes all over the earth. And that will be comforting indeed.